over top of those JPEGs, right? <clears throat> so for your homework, okay, your first assignment, you've been working on the mobile and the desktop wireframe, correct? Mm -hmm. I gave you those layouts, I wanted you to draw on top and create that. But you also need the mobile side, or sorry, the tablet side, okay? The tablet size, how it's laid out in wireframe form, is up to you and what comes out of your brain. I'm not giving you a template to draw on, okay? So what I'm saying is, you are at this point in XD, right? Desktop, mobile for the homework, okay? Now you're gonna take this file and add tablet to it, okay? So eventually, for your homework, you're going to be here. Desktop, mobile, and tablet. Yes? That layout comes out of your brain. I'm not going to give you JPEGs. Sure, you can take pictures <laughs> if you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, but my reasoning here is that if you have a desktop layout and you have a mobile layout the in-between layout should be fairly easy to come up with yes what do you think because you got both extremes you got the smallest size you got the largest size now it's like hey this is gonna fit here and here and here right makes sense I, I would feel that the tablet size is just slightly smaller than the desktop size. Slightly varied in layout too, slightly. But that, that's coming out of your brain, okay? So for you to make the tablet size, you need to ask me some questions, don't you think? If you don't ask me any, then I won't tell you the answers. What? What exact size should the tablet ones be? Absolutely. The exact size of the tablets. You need to know that, correct? Okay. So I'm going to say your tablet size is 1024 wide. Okay. It's not in the document, so write it down or do something with it. It's 1024 pixels wide. What is the other thing that you kind of need to know when it comes to that size? The height. The height, so the, the viewport area, the viewable area, right? So when you scroll, you have a viewport area. It's 768. So 1024 wide by 768 high, okay? Again, it's not in the document. Um, not everything's in the document. Get used to actually talking to me, <laughs> asking me questions, okay? No questions are right or wrong, okay? Um, yep? And maybe the mobile size? The mobile size? I think it's 375, but I'll go over to it to make sure. Seventy-five. Why? The viewport height is eight twelve on that. 
That's like a default. Like if, if you were to select the art board size for that size, it's just default. What else do you need to know about the tablet size other than the width and the viewable area? Or do you need to know any, anything else? Yeah? Well, wouldn't one of the pages of the tablet be a different size to the rest? Because one is longer, like the home page version? Yeah, they're all going to be longer. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. But the, the height that I gave you is the viewable area. So the height is this area. From the top to this blue bar. That's your vertical viewport height. Okay, the actual length is going to be up to how you lay it out. It can be longer than mine. Right? That's okay. That's okay. But what else? Think of your code. Now that you're coding things, think of your code. What do you need to know when it comes to layout? in coding, the coding world. Section, well, Page. no, well, you need to know that, you're right. <laughs> but not necessarily for this, because we already got the sections defined, right? We got the header, we got the about section, we got services and so forth. So those are kind of defined, but it has to do with the width. Uh, the grid. The grid, how many columns? Are you dealing with on tablet size? What have you guys been using um, for desktop size? I believe it's 12. 12. Yeah. Okay. So for tablet, it's the same. 12. Okay. Um, and the mobile size is four. And that's default. But grid for desktop and tablet, I believe, is not default at uh, 12. I think it's 16. But your coding class from the professors that I talked to, you're using 12 columns. Okay? So you need to know that. Fair? The rest of it is really kind of up to you on how you lay it out. So, like I had mentioned, this page, my page, or my canvas, is 4,426 pixels long. Could yours be 5,000? Absolutely it could. It depends on how you want to lay it out top to bottom. You may want to add a little more space in between your sections than I did. Okay, and that's valid, that's fair. Okay. Um, so this number really doesn't matter, okay? I mean, obviously, <laughs> you don't want massive gaps in between your sections, you know, within reason, but it's not a, an issue if it's longer or shorter. Well, maybe, depends. You don't want everything squished together either, right? You gotta find that sweet spot. But it's coming out of your brain. Cool? All right. Um, and this scrolling area is super important. OK? 768. Because if I preview this, I'm going to try to play. I can scroll. This is something that I found in the past. Uh, students may get kind of mixed up when they start working with XC. Is they make 
this number the same as this number? Okay, so if I make my vertical scroll, okay, my vertical scroll, 4,026. So I can change this to be 4,000 or 4,426, 4, right? And then I preview. It previews the entire page. Does that make sense? It makes sense that it previews the entire page, but do you actually function with a website like that? No. no. Exactly. We want it to interact like a real web page. So people have to scroll, right? And once we get into more prototyping, we want to be able to interact with their buttons to go to different pages and so forth and so on. Okay? It's a common mistake, and it happens, don't get me wrong, um, but it's something I would just want to address with you, okay? Because you're going to do um, a prototype for me, right? For this homework. You're also going to do a prototype for me for midterm and for the final. So if we were to prototype this, okay, are we using a low fidelity wireframe or a high fidelity wireframe? <coughs> right now, what we've got up on screen, right? Why is it high? Um, wireframe, high fidelity wireframe. It's just because you got less detail there. Mm -hmm. Makes it a lot easier to do things in the wireframe. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if you start from zero, you kind of start with like low fidelity. So low fidelity, when we think of that exercise that we did, uh, was it last week? That was the uh, home page of the fund. Yeah. yeah. You drew it by hand, right? Or like the first week, that was the first week. Was it the first week? Yeah. I can't remember. We're in third week now. But yeah. low fidelity wireframes are like your scribbles. Yeah. Right? For you. High fidelity wireframes are more complete with footnotes and those kind of things and details and they're digital. So high fidelity. Okay, what kind of prototype is this? Is it a low, fi low fidelity prototype or is it a high fidelity prototype? This, this one right here, is this a low fidelity prototype or a high fidelity prototype? Prototype now. Okay, is it, is it low then? It's low. Yeah. Is it or is it <laughs> exactly. It's confusing. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. Have I confused you? <laughs> no, it's like the prototype was the part is just the uh, interesting about the wireframe, but they're talking about the only prototype. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is kind of confusing. Yeah. And I get it. Okay. But the way I think of it, generally speaking. You know, think of the low fidelity wireframes as paper. And they're for you to sketch out stuff. The high fidelity wireframes is something that you could share with somebody else that you work with so that they can understand how things are going to work. Okay? But when it comes to prototyping, low fidelity prototypes. Use your wireframes. Yeah. High fidelity prototypes, which you are going to have to do for me, use your final flat design. Where you have the color of the Exactly. You got all the pretty pictures, you got all the colors, you got your everything in there right before you go to code. Okay? I'll quiz you on this every single time I see you to a point where you're gonna hate me for this. Okay? That's fine. I got I got I got strong shoulders. Okay. okay. So let's go back to home.
you guys have figured out. Mobile, tablet, and desktop wireframe have to be completed. Okay? Um, then you're also going to finish the mobile, tablet, desktop design layout with colors and images. Just like you did last year, right? So for your final integrated project, you did wireframe. Yes? Then you you can do it two ways. You can duplicate your document and create full designs from your wireframe. Or you can do it all in one document. Okay? You absolutely can. You have to do that for this homework as well. Okay? So complete the design for me. Cool. And export out the images. Yeah? This is essentially what you did last semester for your final integrated project. Okay? So, for the designs of this final look, I have provided you on FOL. Under homework and assignments, assets, homework one, you can download these. There's photos there, and there's sample, <coughs> excuse me, design layouts for reference. Okay, I say they're for reference. So what I'm saying is, do I care if yours looks exactly like mine in those samples? No, I don't care. It's design. Choose different photos if you want. If you don't like the photos that I supplied to you, go get different ones. I don't care. Make it your own. Do you have to use the same color scheme as I did? So let's take a look at a few samples. Right, so there, there's a bunch of photos, abstract stuff in here that I just grabbed from Unsplash. People pick and so forth. Right, that's there. And then the sample um, layout. Okay, and they're just for your reference. Do I care if you put this female in this spot on this area? No. She could go over here. He could go there. She could go, maybe she's not there and you put somebody else there. I don't know. There's no rules in design. Well, there's rules in design. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's up to you. Okay, that's some flexibility. Um, use a different header, different color scheme, totally up to you. Uh, did Jared show you di where you can find different color schemes? Adobe Color? Anybody use that? Anybody heard of it? Okay, so, um, let's go. And I think it's actually built into uh, Illustrator as well. So, Adobe Color with a K. Well, I spelled it wrong, of course. Adobe Color. And it gives you color palettes, okay? Colors that go together. Does anybody have a tough time with, uh, you know, finding the right color palette? It can be hard. Yeah. Um, so Adobe Color is a nice option for you to just kind of pick the colors that you want. Okay. They're predefined. Okay. So, 
quad colors, monochromatic, triad, move this around, and there's a color palette for you. Right? Then you can choose, instead of the five, you choose three. Okay? Um, it's really helpful, actually. It really is. Okay? You could go triad and use three. Right? I'm going to say, if you guys are having a hard time with the design, is design everybody's thing? No. Is code everybody's thing? No. Okay? If you are, well, I can't speak to the coding side of things, okay? Um, if design is hard for you, keep it simple, okay? And what I mean by that, on a website, when you choose your fonts, they could be one color. Your body copy could be a different color. Your headlines could be one type of font. Your body copy can be another type of font, so two fonts. In general speaking, you could use two colors or three colors in your entire layout, and it still looks fabulous. So keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate things. Okay? Keep it simple. Um, simple is good. Okay. All right, so that is, that's all on FOL for you, under the homework, okay? Assignment homework one. So you have the sample, you have some photos. Find your own if you want, that's totally cool. Um, so you're gonna finish that design, you're gonna export out your images for mobile, tablet, and desktop, okay? Um, you're not gonna build any HTML pages, none of that stuff. And then you're going to create the functionality for a low fidelity desktop prototype. Okay? Using this link as your guide. Okay? Do you want to see it? Does anybody look at it? No? <laughs> okay. Um, it's in the course booklet, so make sure you download the new one. Because my old link that I had in there I got broken because I accidentally deleted it um, from my cloud account. So you need to download the new one. You click on it. You open up. And you need to interact with the prototype, figure out the prototype, and you mimic it. So you mimic the animation, you mimic the functionality that I've created. There'll be some things in there that you don't know how to do, but we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, first, I, I don't expect you to be able to jump into that and just do, okay? Okay, so all the menu items work. So services, so it's down to services. Um, contacts, goes down to the contacts. Um, I roll over submit, it gets filled. Press submit. Thank you for submitting. You know, I'll get right back to you after one of my coffees. Um, this is off topic. Well, it's not really off topic. But is it important to have a message for the user when you hit a submit button on a form? Is it important? Yes. 
Why? Yeah, you do not, you do not be privy to some of this or that. Exactly. Usually you just like you take some it and then now what I need to do with it. Exactly. Yeah. And I find when we're developing websites, when we first develop them, we don't realize how much of an impact that does have on a user. So when you go to a website, just to reiterate that, and you hit submit, and your information still stays there, and you don't get a message, what do you generally do again? You hit submit again, don't you? And you hit it again, you hit it again, you hit it again, you probably submitted it 10 times, but you don't know. So what you're doing is causing confusion, and you don't want to confuse the user. Okay, so uh, I think in, in usability terms and experience, uh, this is one of the most important things on a website, if there is any form that you submit. I really do. Okay. Some sort of interaction, a message is great to have pop up. At the very least, the information goes away. <laughs> okay. And then at least we know as users that it probably went to wherever it's supposed to go. Okay. Potential is like submitted. I mean, you can submit and then you get submitted or like the button changes. Or the button changes color. Some sort of interaction that tells the user, hey, this information is gone. You don't have to hit submit again. It can be very minor. Okay, like changing the button's color of submit. Okay. But I do feel like the information needs to leave the field as well. Yeah? Um, can I add other forms in S3? So there is no forms in S3. No forms? Yeah, no forms. But I want to add some other forms in S3. So I want to use other forms. So can I? Use other forms? Yeah, forms but like there is a Oh, you mean like for the canvas? Are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so, like some of the default canvas sizes? Is that what you mean? Oh, S3. Uh, uh, when I, when oh, I fonts. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm, my, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking canvas uh, size because we have phones in there. Yeah. Oh, you're saying fonts. Can you add different fonts? Yeah. Absolutely, you can add different uh, I fonts. Need to um, so through Adobe, you should have Adobe fonts. Do you know where that is? Adobe fonts in your account? So when you sign into your Adobe account, there should be an area because you get that pop-up screen, right? There should be an area for Adobe fonts. And if you click that on, you'll get additional fonts. I can show you that break yeah. if you need to. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, my brain's in a different spot. All right. Um, okay, so you're gonna have to like roll over stuff. See animations happen and try to mimic them. Roll over stuff, interact with this prototype, okay? Okay. Um, yeah. uh, can you show? Yep. So for the home mode, do we have to do only desktop or the all of the web or the Just this one. Just desktop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work. I know, yeah. It's like the functionality is kind of new to us, so it's yeah. going to be like challenging to figure out. It's going to be challenging. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay. So does it does like the whole website have to be home thing or is it like maybe just like whole thing? Whole thing has to function. Okay. Oh, I'm, like we're gonna, next week we're going to actually jump into this yeah. so you got to make sure by next week your wireframes for the desktop are complete uh, when is the homework due again? I'll tell you in a sec I think it's week 5 Okay, we're week 3 so you got 2 more weeks okay. so you're going to interact with this 
We're going to make the entire, I think it's four pages, work. Okay, so go to the blog page, go to the blog page. But you know, like once you get the footer working, you can just share it across your pages, right? Once you get the menu working, you can just share it across your pages. So it does seem a little daunting, but it's not. <laughs> Are you gonna pull your hair out for a while? Probably. See, I hardly have any hair left. I'll see it in the description. <laughs> Okay, um, but like I said, next week we're gonna jump into this and and do some of it. Okay, I'm not gonna leave you out there to to hang. No. Okay. Um. So for the homework, that is. Do that is due. Oh, okay. I'll talk about deliverables and then at the end, once you're done. Okay, once you're done, I need you to upload your XD file or files if you have two one for your wireframe, one for your final design. That's fine, or it could be in one file. I don't care. Do you want them separate, like you want the wireframe and then you want the finished design? You can do it that way, or you can have it, them in the same file, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, the only thing is, if they're all in one file, then your file generally gets heavier. Yeah, that's true. But I, I don't care, okay? Um, and you're exporting images and you're going to put them in the submission drop box and SLL. I'm going to show you how to do this today. Make a shareable link, and you're going to copy and paste it to your pro from your prototype, and um, submit it in the comments area. Okay. Um, and the reason why I do that is because sometimes, and I don't know why it's XD Illustrator is bad for it too. Photoshop sometimes. When you upload you can corrupt your file and I'll download it. It won't be say corrupt for you, but uh, I'll download it and then it says it's corrupt. But I, you know, I kind of have a backup, like the shareable link. I can still see that you did the work, so forth. I'll still email you and ask you to give me the file. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of a fail safe way of doing it, okay? Um, Same with, uh, you guys are in cinema right now, okay? Do version control, make sure you do version control. Cinema files can go corrupt like that. How easy is 3D so far? <laughs> are you pulling your hair out? I had to teach that online. Imagine learning that online, okay? Back during the pandemic. Um, anyways, I love 3D. But you got to turn on your 3D brain. <laughs> but one of the, the issues is you really have to be careful with your files. Make backups, okay? Because it will go corrupt and you will go, I spent 20 hours and this is gone. And poor John will say, well, you know, I can't, I can't give you any marks for something that's corrupt, right? So anyways, all right. Um, so that's what I want submitted. The grading is down here. Okay. This to me, okay, grading wise, this stuff here. So your tablet wireframe, I'm gonna grade. Your mobile design, your tablet design, your desktop design, your exported images. That's the free money. Just do it. Okay? And give it to me. And I'll give you marks for it. Okay? Um, 
renaming of objects, groups, and components in your layers. Do it, and I'll give you the money. I'll give you the marks. But miss one, I give you no marks. Okay? Because it's free. <laughs> Take advantage of free. Be thorough. And why I, th this is why I do it like this. You need to be thorough. Okay? And then down in here on the prototype completion is a bit more of my opinion of how you made things work, did you make things work, and so forth. Okay? Fair? All right? Fair? And that's due uh, week five, January 29th, which I believe is a Sunday. Okay. And all your assignments for me are Sunday's submissions. What's that? The same thing you sent me from other times. Really? Everybody else did it? Yeah. Oh, they stole my idea. Yeah. I didn't even tell them I was there. What you'll find is, for me, and probably the other instructors, is I like to do Sundays or at the start of class. Yeah, just tell them to make sure it's Sunday. Okay. Um, but when you have two groups, like for me, then it's just easier to do it on one day and everybody targets that day. And generally speaking, I feel like it goes in your brain. Everybody knows it's Sunday. I don't know. Okay, so that is homework one. I'm gonna go through the midterm and then we'll do great, yep. So if we're kind of like making the tablet wireframe ourselves, how are we supposed to know how the tablet is meant to look like design-wise while the images? You take, so if, if it was me, after you create the wireframe for the tablet side, I would then, on the design side of things, I would design the desktop, okay? So put all the pictures in, design the mobile, put all the pretty pictures in, and then you decide what the design is for the tablet side. Because you got two templates. Does that make sense? Okay, so what do we do first? We, do we make the desktop design first or do we prototype it first? Um, that's kind of up to you. You can, your workflow, you could finish all the wireframes. Then you could finish all the designs. Then you could go back and use your desktop wireframe to make the prototype. It's up to you how you want to do that. Okay, there, there's no... I'm not, you could, on the other side of things, okay, you could finish your tablet wireframe size, prototype your desktop wireframe, and then do the design, mobile, tablet, and desktop. Whatever works for you. Does that make sense? Yeah, and we need every single aspect of this assignment done by the 29th. Yes. Okay. Okay. But you have to realize you've done the mobile, I hope, and you've done the desktop wireframe already. Okay. And next week, we're going to work on some of your prototyping as well. Okay. For the assignment. So that's homework one. So midterm is very, very similar. But probably less work. So for midterm, it actually is probably less work. 
but it's focused on prototyping. Okay. For midterm, you're going to create using your mobile tablet and desktop um, wireframe, create a low fidelity version of it. Okay. So you're going to take your wireframes and prototype them for me. All of them. So mobile, tablet, and desktop. Yeah. Is it Terraformer one though to prototype the desktop? That's for homework. But your midterm is prototyping your final integrated project. Oh. Okay. Because that's different, right? That's the um, the rebrand, right? So you're going to create. Like in, in John's class, you're creating like 3D bottles or containers of some sort, and you're gonna create promotional images and all that jazz, right? Jared's class, you're going to probably do a design for, I'm not sure what Jared's got a complete. Yeah, I'm gonna make the logo. You're doing the logos for it? Okay, which is great. But for my class, it's, it reflects your website layout. Okay. which is your wireframes for midterm which is your wireframes prototyped yes so you're gonna give me three prototypes mobile tablet and desktop size for your final integrated project yes on the same page this is more prototype no, more wireframe layouts and prototyping. Okay? And really, the low fidelity prototype will aid in working out kinks in the functionality of the website. Okay? We talked about this last week. It's an important step to see if anything isn't going to work. Okay? Because how much do you guys like changing code? You love it? <laughs> if you don't like writing it in the first place, changing it sucks. Okay? So just imagine you're like into development stage and you forgot about a button. And you gotta add it in. And you gotta write all that code and put it in. Man, oh man, wouldn't it have been nice to have a prototype to figure out that you needed a button in the first place? Right? Okay. So, three prototypes, but you're also going to fill out a functionality discovery document for me. Okay. Which you will find on FOL. So, go to FOL. Show you where it is. Under your homework assignments and assets, midterm for FIP, there is a functionality discovery document. Okay, I think it's a Word document. Okay. And so if we open that up. opens up in pages. I don't have Word on my system because I don't like Microsoft. Um, <laughs> so you're going to give me some insight into what you've done. I ask you two questions. Okay? I know. Super tough. Two questions. One being, you know, wireframes and prototyping are very useful in establishing the scope of the project. They aid in helping you identify all the different screens you might need to design and all the links that you may need for additional functionality. How many pages do you have to do for your file integrated project? Is it three? Four? Four. Four. Three, 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 three pages though, right? Three, four. How many pages? Do you know? 
<laughs> you don't know. I don't know. Do we have this this that we have started at Google? But I don't know each of them from the beginning. Okay. Well, look at the document. Okay. I, I'm sure they probably specified how many pages that you need to design. I suspect it's three. I think that's what the last class told me. But I don't want to lie to you. Look at the document. Okay? Three pages, four pages, whatever it is. Okay? You know, beyond those pages you designed, when prototyping your wireframe designs, what additional pages have you discovered would need to be created? Okay. So what I'm saying by that is, you know, uh, you've got the main page, you've got a contact page, essentially. You've got, because it's a product, you probably got a product page. Maybe you decide that you want to sell online. So this site becomes an e-commerce site. So in the products page, if I hit buy, what else do I need? I need a page to buy it. Yeah. But do you have to design it? No. But tell me about it in this document. That's it. Just discover some extra pages that you think would be useful for your project. Yeah? Makes sense? And you'll it'll become really apparent once you start prototyping and using it. Okay? Um, so yeah, prototyping will really help in working out functionality issues. Did your group work out any functionality problems or design flaws while prototyping your wireframe? If so, please list and describe those problems. So, you know, this is kind of a soft example, but you know, you create a deep scrolling page, right? We've been on those pages that you gotta scroll and scroll and scroll on a desktop, right? They take forever to get down to the bottom. So when I scrolled to the bottom of the page, there was no quick way to get back to the top. I alleviated uh, this issue by adding a back to the top icon. So I just click the button at the bottom, and go straight back up. Little things like that. Okay. Discover, discover. Yeah? Three prototypes, mobile, tablet, desktop, and fill out this document. Okay? And submit it. You guys are going to be a pro at prototyping. I know, that was cheesy, whatever. Um, okay, the other thing is, sorry, I'm taking a little bit of time, but um, that's okay. One thing I wanna mention <coughs> is students will also be required to make sure that every link that is on the wireframe page is linked to somewhere. So in your self-discovery on the site, you know, maybe, like I said, you have a button on your products page that should go to like a shopping cart page. You need to make that button work because I want you to, I want you to show me that you understand that it should go somewhere, <laughs> okay? I know that kind of sounds maybe simple, but it, it's a thing, okay? If that button doesn't go somewhere, then people who are using your prototype may think you don't really realize that you need another page. So the interaction isn't, it's a bad user experience essentially, okay? And I'm going to show you what I mean by this. Um, we don't want any dead ends in our prototype. As soon as you hit a dead end, then you got to start over again. I got to close down that prototype 
start it back up again and prototype it. Like go through it, sorry. Like interact with it. So no dead ends. Okay. Um, so it need, all your links need to go to like somewhere. If you didn't design the page, it can just go to what we call like a default page. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay. It's important because your clients, when they proto when they interact with your prototypes, because they will, if you lead them down a path where they can't get out of, they're not as generally tech savvy as we are. Okay? And they get stuck. And next thing you know, you get email saying, well, Joe, I went here and now it's broken and I can't get back to here. And, and I'm like, okay, that's my bad, but it's a pain in the ass. Okay? <clears throat> so what I mean by that is if I go to, let's go back here. All right. Like these. They have a social media link on here. Okay? Click it. Default page. That's it. I didn't design that page, right? And this could be, say, in this layout, it could be um, the blog page. Maybe you're not required to do the blog page in your file integrated project, right? But it is a link, just linked to a page that says default. That is it. But make sure all your links that you didn't design go to this page. Yes? That's it. That's what I mean by that, okay? The other important thing I'll say to you before we take a break is make sure if you link me to the default page that I can get back from it, I can get away from it, okay? So add functionality on your default page that when I click this, I go back the page that I was at. Okay. Does that make sense? Because what will happen is if you don't add the functionality on the default page to go back to where you came from, I'm at a dead end. I got to start the prototype over again. Right? We want it to flow seamlessly. And make it a joy to go through your wireless. Yes? Okay. That's my uh, my hour rant on your homework and your answer. <laughs> All right. Let's take a break. Uh, let's do 10 minutes. Because I've been